they've been all working on this. Everybody from Goldman Sachs to JP Morgan to BlackRock to Ap- Apollo to, I mean, you name it, they're all involved. Obviously, Fidelity have been pioneers. Franklin Templeton have been pioneers. So they're all ready. And it seems that it has been decided that I think Gary Gensler, to take some political heat, has said, fine, I'll approve a Bitcoin spot ETF. And I think, you know, BlackRock being the benchmark name to come into it has helped tremendously. And I think we'll get an ETH spot ETF as well. And that also helps because that's going to bring in the RIA networks and others, give them something they understand, which is an equity that they can put into a regular portfolio. The first decade of cryptocurrency adoption was predominantly led by retail investors from around the world, taking the industry from its early days of mining in basements and trading Bitcoin for pizzas to becoming a trillion dollar asset class. However, the scope of development and adoption was limited by the retail sector alone. The buzz around institutional involvement began even before Michael Saylor's MicroStrategy acquired Bitcoin in August 2020, with expectations that 2022 would mark the onset of mass institutional adoption. Nevertheless, global macroeconomic conditions prevented this from materializing. Real Vision CEO, Raul Pal, now envisions 2024 as the turning point for institutional participation in the cryptocurrency sector. He anticipates that institutional investors, including pension funds, money managers, and hedge funds, have been preparing to enter the market for some time but have been held back by the gloomy economic situation in the United States. Pal expects a significant shift in 2024 driven by a substantial change in the Federal Reserve's policies and subsequent quantitative easing to boost the U.S. economy and markets. This transformation is likely to influence other central banks as well, making 2024 a crucial year for institutional investments in cryptocurrencies. In a recent discussion with the Thinking Crypto channel, Pal shared his perspective on the cryptocurrency industry, especially as it approaches what he believes will be a substantial bull market for assets like Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Solana. He highlighted the increasing likelihood of the SEC approving at least one spot Bitcoin exchange-traded fund, which would further facilitate institutional investments in cryptocurrencies. Powell's predictions point to a potential 5 to 10-fold growth in the overall cryptocurrency market capitalization and positive developments in key assets within the crypto space. Please take a moment to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to drop your comment and observations in the comment section below. Thanks and enjoy the video. So I think it probably gets approved this year. But I don't know. I have no edge in that. Um, and it's really a matter of price, right? If you'd have launched a Bitcoin ETF in October of last year, you would have had zero buyers. Yeah. So it's a matter of price. So the moment the narrative starts picking up and the liquidity comes back and people have got some money to invest again, look, nobody's got any money right now. Everybody's skint. Um, you know, Everyone's had a tough time. It's got no recycled gains because everything's below all-time highs. But once that starts happening, money will flow in. So let's assume January happens. Well, usually by this stage in the crypto markets, we should start hitting crypto summer by summer of next year, You know, from, from sometime after about April. And I think that means that now the channel is open and people can take money in. So as you rightly say, there's a lag because the markets aren't, re- you know, the market narrative isn't ready to bring in billions and billions of dollars. But if the if crypto does its crypto thing, and by kind of Q2, Q3 of, of 2024, the markets are starting to rip, you know, interest rates are coming down, liquidity's in the system, people are making money, Oh, yeah, we'll see, you know, tens of billions of dollars coming into this. Bitcoin did 3x its previous all-time high in the last cycle. Does it do that somewhat less because, you know, as you get more maturity, maybe it does less? ETH? Well, maybe ETH does three times its all-time high like Bitcoin did in the last cycle. Um, So that's kind of how I'm thinking about it is versus all-time highs. I think the space probably ends up in the end, closer to a $10 trillion asset class than it is a trillion dollars today. So is there a 10x from the space? Possible. Is it a 5x instead? Maybe. But, you know, I don't really think in terms of where it gets to in price, it gets to where it gets to. You just need to be in it for the ride. We know how much is held by the kind of FTX estate. Mm. So it's a known known. 
Can you have, you know, much like we've seen with Mt. Gox stuff in Bitcoin, will you see, you know, occasional periods of liquidation? Where, Of course. But there's nothing we don't know. But what we do know is there's a lot of activity on Solana. There's a lot of people building. There's some great projects. The speed of Solana is, you know, indisputable. And then we've got Fire Dancer coming um, at the end of the year into next year, which is a complete and utter step change for blockchains. Mm-hmm. Um, so that goes, that takes Solana's potential TPS from 65,000 to 1.2 million. Okay, that's crazy town. Yeah. So we've got an already bullish story of a blockchain that survived, right? Much like ETH survived in 2018. You know, it was down 97%. Solana was down 97 and a half. Very similar. Um, but what's come out of the other side is a very strong community, particularly in the developer community, the applications layer and all of that stuff. And Tolly's proven to be a decent, high quality leader and thought leader, been very reasonable, you know, um, very conciliatory, not tr- non-tribal. And I think that's that's appealing to people. And I see Solana as, as really one of the, one of the only other chains that really has is looking at the mass market adoption of cryptocurrency. You know, different chains have different purposes, I think, or narratives. But that's Solana's, and and if the uh, fire dancer goes well, then okay, that becomes a a big deal. So that's why you know I'm very bullish on that. During the conversation with Tony Edward, Pal delves into potential narratives to monitor in the upcoming cycle. These narratives are expected to influence price trends steer the industry's trajectory, and yield substantial gains for well-positioned investors, ranging from hundreds of thousands to millions of dollars. PAL identifies several key focal points for the next cycle, including payment systems, central bank digital currencies, and tokenized money market funds. Beyond financial advancements, he foresees the broader adoption of non-fungible tokens in various sectors such as ticketing, insurance, contracts, and real estate. Moreover, PAL anticipates a heightened emphasis on decentralized finance, especially with the influx of institutional players and significant venture capital investments reaching into the hundreds of billions. Existing narratives are projected to expand, diversify with more practical applications, and give rise to multiple breakout narratives, creating a fervent rush for crypto assets and projects, akin to previous bull markets. Additionally, PAL underscores that these dynamics will be further amplified when the Federal Reserve resumes printing currency. In the interview, PAL also addresses global adoption and the observable shift in influence from the Western world to the East suggesting the emergence of a bipolar world rather than a complete transition. If everyone sees a trillion-dollar market and the U.S. is fumbling the ball, they'll take it. Mm. And it's a truly international market. This is the only market outside of foreign exchange where it's the same product everywhere in the world trades for every single person. Now, foreign exchange is actually pretty difficult if you're in India or you're in the Philippines or you're in Brazil to get hold of dollars. But crypto is, you know, Bitcoin is a Bitcoin is a Bitcoin. It's the same everywhere in the world and everyone's got access to it. So they, everybody understands how big this is and how big blockchain technology is. So you've got the first mover advantage. There's a competitive war going on about capturing this market. Um, the, I, I think China closed, but then what it did is issue its CBDC it kind of understood where all of its money was because it's got a closed capital account and it needs to see where its money goes. And then it kind of reopens it via Hong Kong for international business and they can monitor their pipes. I think India will do the same because India's got a partially closed capital account. So I think they're going to, well, they're, they're implementing the CBDC and other stuff right now to make sure that they know the money in their system so that they can measure capital flight and that kind of stuff. Um, So, I, they're all working on moving towards this. I think everybody understands, you know, I spent some time with Sopnendu Mahanti from the Monetary Authority of Singapore, who's the chief fintech officer. He's like, look, we're all working together. The Europeans, the Singaporeans, the Swiss, the UK, everybody. It's only the US is not working with everybody. So everybody's kind of working together under the BIS, um, but the Americans aren't. Is there a shift now of prosperity and wealth, innovation, almost going to the East, away from the West and the United States? Well, they seem to be faster right now, that's for sure. Although the Europeans were reasonably fast, considering. So, and the Swiss were fast. Um, but I do think it's a broadly split 
polarity world. It's a Binance versus Coinbase world, mm. right? And I think both sovereign states have a vested interest in both of those two because they get to control the asset class. Now, Binance is a lot bigger because it deals in a lot more territories. And so it, if China, if theoretically China has some involvement in Binance in the same way that the US can tap the shoulder of Coinbase, then then the Chinese understand global capital flows in a way that they couldn't do before, which is a it's a superpower. Mm. Um, and the US will probably do the same. So I do think it is bifurcating into these two different worlds. Um, and Asia has been faster to move yeah. um, overall. Does it remain that way? Because don't forget, the real capital base is the United States still. Raul Powell is not the only one who is excited about the next crypto and liquidity cycle. Raul Powell is not the sole figure brimming with enthusiasm for the upcoming cryptocurrency and liquidity cycle. Binance founder CZ has also recently discussed the Bitcoin having and its potential impact on prices in the following year. According to this Canadian-Chinese businessman and investor, Bitcoin's post-having trajectory won't yield immediate doubling in value. It might even take several months before substantial changes become apparent. Nevertheless, he envisions the possibility of the leading cryptocurrency surpassing its current all-time high and establishing a new record before 2024 concludes. CZ is particularly eager about 2025, the year that follows a Bitcoin halving, historically known for being favorable to Bitcoin and the broader cryptocurrency industry. What are your thoughts on the perspectives presented by Raul Pal and CZ regarding the forthcoming bull cycle? Do you concur with the notion that Bitcoin will attain a new all-time high post having, or do you believe that prevailing macroeconomic conditions will persist and temper the excitement? Feel free to share your comments and observations in the comments section below. For more Daily Dose crypto news, check out these two awesome videos on your screen. Click now and we will see you on the next video.